Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyag Jitani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale. I'm about to go through the entire matching process as well as residency, and so there's a lot of questions that I have been thinking to myself. And also, having gone through the process of making my rank list, I just figured I would make this video about the factors that I considered, and then I'm going to substantiate it obviously with data based on uh, several articles, but the big factors that individuals should consider when ranking residency programs. And because you consider these factors when ranking residency programs, you should also consider these factors when choosing what residency programs to apply to, uh, because as you'll see, that has a very big bearing on obviously where you end up and ultimately what you think is positive and negative. So without further ado, let's get into the crux of this video. The source is actually from this article, which obviously will be linked in the description below. It's about what factors do applicants weigh most when picking residency programs. And these factors, just by hearing them, I think you'll learn a lot about the ways that you should think about the programs that you want to apply to, and ultimately the things that matter, uh, because these factors are definitely not the same as the things that I was considering. Um, well, some of them are, but not nearly as uh, same as what I was considering when I was deciding what medical school to go to. So let's, let's refer to the tangible objective data here. So among U.S. allopathic senior medical students, ranking um, residency programs across all specialties, the top five consideration among all of these seniors, these are people who are in my shoes essentially uh, in their last year of medical school ranking um, programs. The most cited factor, 90% of individuals say uh, desired geographic location, so where you want to end up, whether that's Pacific, Northwest, uh, Midwest, East Coast, uh, South, uh, the South, right? Like there's so many places and it all just depends on where you see yourself being and where you see yourself establishing, but that is always uh, listed as number one. The second is the goodness of fit. And the way I like to think about this is each program is a puzzle piece and you are also your own puzzle piece. And you need to see if your puzzle piece puzzle piece matches into the program's holistic puzzle. And if it does, that is what I see as perceived goodness of fit. And there's a lot of ways to understand this. For example, if you're like me and does a lot of maybe social media research or maybe digital health insights or maybe a little bit of business and medicine, you probably want to rank uh, programs higher that have a focus on a little bit more of like a non-traditional uh, resident as opposed to someone who is much more focused on just purely academics and publishing. And so for me, goodness of fit is about like focusing on like, okay, what are the other ways that I can contribute to this residency and do they have this multidisciplinary nature that I'm looking for? The third uh, that was cited is reputation of the program. There are several ways to find rankings of programs. Uh, I will give you two. The first is the new U.S. News and World Report. If you type in any specialty and then type in rankings and then type in U.S. News and World Report on Google, you will find um, the rankings that U.S. News and World Report produces. Another way is to do it through Doximity. Doximity is essentially like Facebook for doctors. It's a social media network for doctors. And um, Doximity creates rankings of every specialty by serving physicians in uh, that specialty and asking, hey, what do you think about this program or this program? And which one do you think has a better reputation? Uh, reputation is obviously really important because programs that have a better reputation tend to be a little bit more clinically rigorous than pay, uh, programs that are not. And again, obviously, this is a population-based statistics. There's always going to be outliers. Um, and then the quality of residents in the program and then work-life balance were the fourth and fifth big things that were talked about. Quality of residents, you can kind of just gauge that by seeing who you interact with on interview day or even just like looking through their website and seeing what types of residents they have. And then work-life balance, you can also gauge by asking residents, hey, how much time do you have off? Do you have 28-hour call? Um, you know, like how much do you work? Some programs may have a lot of outpatient. Some programs may have a lot of inpatient. Some programs may not allow for much stuff outside of the hospital, while other programs may. It all just depends. They also um, interviewed, uh, aside from allopathic seniors, they also interviewed a um, osteopathic senior medical students. And you'll see that here, goodness of fit and geographic location were one and two again, uh, and then work-life balance, quality of residence. And then the last one here that I think was actually snipped and didn't make it onto the last list, and this is because it's osteopathic seniors, entire different population, is the program director. The program director is essentially the president of the program. So oftentimes, the vibe you get from the program director is going to be trickled down through the leadership, right? Just like how our country, when there is a president, whatever the viewpoints are of that president are trickled down to kind of guide our whole country as a whole. Similarly, the program director's perspective on whether it's we love research or we love we love seeing people do things outside of medicine. Um, whatever those views are, are going to trickle down in the program and kind of shape the program. So make sure you also consider the program director when thinking about residency programs. So 
the last thing I want to end on is just some general ways to ensure that you do match. And this is because there are pretty big trends among people who match and people who don't. And actually, they're not the same. Uh, they are often very different. And this is because people who often end up not matching tend to be people who don't have as many places to rank on their rank list and often end up being people who don't have as many interviews. Um, and again, this is more of a trickle-down thing. And we can go into the pros and cons of this or whether this is good or bad. But this, this is actually one of the reasons why people are applying to 100-plus programs. Because if you apply to more programs, you're likely to get more interviews, which means you can rank more places, which means you're more likely to match. Because if you rank more places, you will likely match. Because for example, the median number of applications submitted by U.S. seniors who match was 33. The median number of interviews offered to match seniors was 16, and the median number of um, uh, median number of places they rank was 14 programs. Now, if you look at the median number of places of U.S. MD seniors who did not match, they applied to um, many more places, but they didn't get as many interviews. They got 15 as opposed to 16, and then they attended 14, and they only ranked. Uh, 13 of those programs, right? So even though the people who matched ranked one one more program, holistically, this just tells you that trends of people who don't match tend to be individuals whose rank lists are not as long. And for that reason, the algorithm sometimes can't spit out an answer for them because it's not the best fit. Uh, more videos on the algorithm to come very soon, but that's just some insight into like kind of how it works. Same thing here. This is about DO applicants. And you'll see that again, the people who matched ranked 13, people who didn't match ranked 12. Um, it's a very small difference. It's probably not even statistically significant. But the general trend is that as you rank more programs, it increases the chance that you match. And um, the way you determine what programs to rank and the order, order in which to rank them are kind of what I mentioned here. Geographic, goodness of fit, reputation, program directors, quality of residence. Um, and so hopefully you found this to be a, like in, insightful. I think as you start thinking about residency and start thinking about where you want to apply to, these are all things you should have in the back of your head and questions that you should be asking on the interview trail. So hopefully if you enjoyed this, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. It means a lot to me, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.